So you just got burned on your face and are worried it's gonna leave a permanent mark? Stay tuned for tips from a facial plastic surgeon. This is Dr. Mike Nyack. I'm a facial plastic surgeon from St. Louis, Missouri, and one of the texts I got recently from my daughter made my heart sink. She was on spring break with some friends. It was a very well-supervised affair, and in an absolute freak accident, one of her friends whipped a marshmallow stick with a flaming hot marshmallow on it, flew across the campfire, and hit my daughter in the face. And she sent me this text, and it shows a classic first-degree burn. So what is a burn? A burn is when something either chemical or friction or solar radiation, or in this case, heat, injures the outer layers of the skin. In this case, it's a first degree burn. It looks very much so that the epidermis, the top layer of the skin has been injured. You can kind of see the texture change, but it looks like it's still pink, there's still life in it, and it hurts. And that tells you that the deeper layers with the nerve endings and the blood supply are still okay. Deeper burns, second degree, third degree burns, they get so deep that there's no pain left and there's no redness and it looks more like dead tissue. So this is a classic first degree burn and we have opportunity here to treat it so that it heals the best it possibly can and hopefully leave no marks. So in the first few hours, what did I tell her to do? I told her to ice it because the injury is still ongoing. There is still heat it's still injuring the tissue. So the first few hours, a cool compress, either my favorite is to have a big salad bowl full of ice and water and take a washcloth and just cycle that washcloth in and out. Get it soaking wet with ice cold water, hold it on the area. Soaking wet, hold it on the area. The reason I like that is it carries an awful lot of heat away from the wound and you're not putting ice directly on the skin because the last thing you wanna do is injure burned skin with frostbite on top of it. So if you're just using an ice cold washcloth back and forth, you're not gonna get it too cold. That icing phase typically lasts the first few hours. After that, it is not uncommon in burns that are superficial, first degree, early second degree burns, for the epidermis, the top layer of the skin, to separate and blister fluid accumulate between the top of the skin and the living skin underneath. That blister fluid, sometimes it leaks out on its own, but we never want you to take that the blister, the outer layer, and peel it off and throw it away. And it can be so hard. You just want to get rid of it, and it feels like the right thing to do. That is a biological dressing. It's helping to protect the living skin underneath from the bacteria in the environment and the rest of the dry air that can continue to injure the skin further. What you can do to help make this heal more quickly is to kind of foster along that protection by using a bland ointment. So not a medicated cream, not an antibiotic ointment. Those are actually toxic to some degree, but just a bland aqua aquaphor, vaniply, Vaseline, or if you can get a prescription from your local doctor for a specific burn preparation like Biofine or Silvadine, I think those would be reasonable too. I think they're overkill. In my child, we used Vaniply, just a non-medicated ointment. What that's doing is it's keeping the living skin from drying out and getting desiccated and infected. It's also a good idea to treat that area against the one bacterium that is very specifically known to be a bad actor and likes to infect burns. That bacterium is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. There are not great oral medications or pills to treat that. There are a few, but they're not very good. Interestingly, all you have to do is just change the pH of the skin, and Pseudomonas doesn't grow very well. So it has a really hard time growing in even mildly acidic environments. So what I recommend it to my daughter. She's over there, by the way, in the frame behind me. So what I recommend it to my daughter is to use a quarter teaspoon of white vinegar in a cup of water and it's just plain tap water and soak that over the skin three or four times a day and it just changes the pH, changes the acidity of the environment just a little bit and that keeps that one particular bug that we're worried about at bay without the need for oral antibiotics. So after about a week you can tell that the, the burn is maturing, you can see the old skin starting to slough off, some of the pigmented epidermis turns into like little coffee grounds and starts flaking off and after about a week the skin is healed over enough, it no longer needs the soaps and it no longer needs the ointment. In very fair skin, I would just recommend sunscreen from there on out because solar radiation helps 
prolong the pinkness and delays the final healing. So sunscreen covering with clothing using um, sunglasses if it's in over an eye area, those are all helpful. But in people like me and my daughter with darker pigmentation, now we're up to round two of burn treatment because darker pigmentation after burn injury loves to heal irregularly. Salt and pepper healing with white spots and black spots, and we're looking for even pigment. So the tricks that we use there are number one, a cortisone product. And the one that I recommended to her is from my line. It's I think the best stuff we have is called uh, calming cream. It's got a cortisone and a little bit of aloe vera in it. I had her use that two or three times a day. And then an anti-pigment product, and that's our Koji pad. So these are multi-purpose. I use them for lots of things, but they are absolutely perfect for treating healing skin that's recovered from a burn, it's darker, and it's in the first several months after treatment, and you're trying to prevent hyper or hypopigmentation. What we're trying to do is get a hold of that dark biology and make it act like more calm skin types. Um, and you can see that I've, over time, she used her calming cream, she used her uh, kojic acid pads, and she thankfully has zero marks, zero traces, despite having a pretty intense burn with blisters from scalding hot sugar on her face. I am confident that if had that had not been treated the exact right way, she would have at the very least had some pigment issues and potentially had a deeper injury. That ice water helps first degree burns not turn into second, not turn into third. There are things you can do to make your burns heal the best possible. And what I've shared with you today is what I think is the single best approach. And it's what I actually did using my own daughter. So if you show this video to your grandmother, she's probably going to say, ah, oh, forget all that. All you need to do is put a little butter on it or put a little sunscreen on it or put a little, my grandmother, put a little coconut oil on it. None of those are great ideas. You want to have as bland of a product as possible on that fresh burn. These kinds of things would wait for a week or so when the skin is healed over. At the beginning stages, bland ointment, something like Vaseline, Vaniply, or Aquaphor. All those other things, butter, coconut oil, sunscreen, are introducing proteins and chemicals into your living skin because the barrier function is gone. All those are gonna delay healing. So sunburn is truly a burn and is treated in a very similar way. We stop the burn by actually introducing cold through cold compresses, getting out of the sun. We keep the area moisturized and lubricated so that the barrier function is restored. For sunburn, calming cream is fantastic. It has aloe and a little bit of hydrocortisone in it, which also minimizes the itching. And then if you're a pigment prone person, I think the Koji pads are fantastic because I've seen way too many pigment prone people get freckles and leftover pigment after their sunburn fades on the bridge of their nose or on the apples of their cheeks. And so we want to control the body's tendency to overproduce pigment by calming it with things like the hydrocortisone and the kojic acid. I hope you enjoyed that information. And if you would like more info on how to age your best and look your best, smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and please give us a like.